Okay, and we're on air. This is the Public Law Radio Show. As heard every Friday on uh, No Borders Radio, Tennis Order. Streaming live over at TammyPepperman.org. We're brought to you by you, so support the station. Keep us rocking and rolling here. Um, what's on the agenda there, uh, Tammy? Oh my gosh, it's, it's been a heck of a week. They're really ramping it up against the cops this week. Really bad. Um, psychiatrists came in and admitted they're dosing uh, all the Americans and people in Scotland with lithium in the water supply. Oh? Oh yeah, it's identical to uh, Aldous Huxley's uh, Ultimate Revolution. And, uh, Apparently they're they're calling it a study. You know how you human test subjects love to be studied by the United States Incorporated. And uh, if you didn't know you were a human test subject, you can go read the contracts uh, with the FDA and the Ethics Commission by going and visiting Fiji, the Freeburg's uh, Ethics Commission International. And of course, you want to uh, designate that you want it in English if you do read and write English only, which is such a fallacy. So over on the news, UKMSN.com was lithium water test and suicide study. They're <laughs> they're saying they're protecting you folks by drugging you up. I'll start reading. Adding lithium to water drinking water supplies could help reduce suicide rates, according to a team of psychiatrists. Naturally occurring levels of the chemical are to be measured. Measured. So that means they're already there. In supplies in Scotland and compared with suicide rates in the population it serves. It follows similar suicides in the United States and Japan, which found oh sorry, it follows similar studies in the United States and Japan which found that suicide rates are higher in areas where there are low levels of lithium in the drinking water. You Americans have been doped and drugged and poisoned by lithium in the water and they are talking about taking measurements of these things having already been done upon you. Let that sink in. This is Nazi Germany. The project was announced at the Royal College of Psychiatrists International Congress in London. Lithium levels will be measured by postcode and compared with Scottish Health Survey and NHS statistics. So they've already got the numbers on this because they've been testing it out on you human test subjects under Congress who has control of the Food and Drug Administration that is contracted and in league with Fiji. You know, those initials, F-E-C-E, come from fee and side, meaning to kill the fee. Fiji has always meant to kill the fee. That is referring to human test subjects within a fiefdom. What do you think, Bo? Uh, well, it's um, just more of the same. So Y'all agreed to be citizens here, so we're going to conduct some experiments on you because it's good for you. Okay, I like that because I voted. I like my constitution. My constitution which gives me sovereignty. Oh, man, we were arguing with somebody yesterday, an agent that was pitching the 13th amendment and he came on pitching it and he says how dare you call me out for pitching this stuff it was, it was quite interesting as a conversation as uh, psychiatrists also become the fall guys uh, they're trying to pitch these concepts and um, if you buy the concept, you're buying it from the tree of knowledge. You're participating and partaking. 
So be aware of the concepts themselves. Anything that is fictional or created in the mind is a concept. Apparently there, there's no confirmation on that uh, verdict that somebody was saying this handed down to Dean Clifford. Appears no. to be more of a rumor than anything. Yeah, I haven't seen anything further. It does look like a rumor. Um, the way that things are being presented is is the vilification of Dean Clifford, and they want to measure the sheeple response on what's happening with their brother. So if you guys are tired of this story, they know they won because you're not saying anything. You're just tired of hearing it, tired of going on and on and on and on. That means that you've just given up on your brother and left him hanging on the cross. And um, it's all up to the sheeple. I mean, that's, that's what decides whether or not Jesus is crucified. You know? This is a court of public opinion. That's how the business model moves. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever he was taught by his teachers, I wish he had uh, not kept claiming that franchise last name. It would have been interesting to see how that would have went. Uh, maybe, um, but... Uh, Clifford is a last name, a franchise name, so that is not uh, not part of uh, what we do. Right, and you know we'll we'll circle back around after we get the uh, uh, other stuff situated. It's just so sad to see the agents how they took their hands away from him after they had been the ones that were. Brooding him on and, and yeah, and somebody filed a habeas corpus on his right. behalf, which was not uh, a good idea in no. that particular circumstance. Well, habeas corpus says you have the body. It's telling the court, you take me, take me, I'm yours. And it's as any other marriage, okay? And then the, the gurus. The, the false teachers who are teaching those things know what these things mean. Know what these things mean. And there, there, there are no excuses for leaving somebody on the cross or delivering them up through use of psychology and language. Yeah. So what else is new with you this week since your last show? Um, it's been busy. Just um, trying to follow the news here as much as I can. It's pretty crazy and saying to keep up um, with the uh, different aspects of what's coming out. Uh, let's, let's see, it's, um, I don't know, where we want to start, let's see, uh, armed U.S. drones now flying over Baghdad, like they weren't there before now. Right. Let's see, uh, that's from the investment watch. Let's see, uh, okay, um. Let's see. Shocking ex-governor advisor charges over sexual images of children. Absolutely. Again from Investment Watch. Uh, this is uh, and they posted in a video over there. But let's see if I can find the story. Uh, yeah, I can't find it right now. Let's see. Uh, I've got one, this uh, Florida rep, uh, miami.cbslocal.com, Florida rep arrested for DUI, accepts the plea deal. So he, he copped a plea. Okay, Florida representative, you say? Let's yeah, see, um, it was a pretty one. He looks le legislator? Yeah. Absolutely. So he's a state legislator? Absolutely. Look at that tie. Isn't that so shiny? <laughs> 
if you want to, yeah, if you if, if you want to uh, racially profile, most of the criminals have suits and ties. That's uh, that's maybe one good good uh, you know. Isn't that like a character profile? The character yeah. profile. There yeah. you go. Yeah, there, there, there's a good character actor. profile. And if they're carrying a briefcase and they're heading into a courtroom, probably most definitely a criminal. Well, this one's cool. It says Tallahassee, a Florida legislator was who was arrested for allegedly driving under the influence has reached a plea deal. The deal would sentence Representative Dane Eagle for six months of probation and subject him to alcohol tests. He's been made a subject of some of the things. Yeah. And they diagnosed him. Oh yeah, it was beautiful to see because the psychiatrists were right on that one. Always, always. I mean, that's that's who. Uh, this is vicious. Oregon. I was reading the story earlier. Uh, they want to make mandatory uh, non-refusal blood withdrawals. They pull you over. Yeah. And, um, and I'm sure it wasn't the cops that came up with that idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. Their handlers, the attorneys, are the ones shoving this policy on them and everybody. Wow, well, and most of them, you know. Didn't they make it a big deal about that girl? About that boy, I mean, that uh, young, young boy got... Uh, hit by a flash grenade that the SWAT team threw right in his crib. Yeah, the baby. And now the big deal about the story of demonizing the cops in this one here and the language now in that story it looks like an attorney wrote it. Absolutely. So you brought that one up yesterday on your show. It's a, I had to uh, agree with you when I was reading the the verbiage on that, because normal people don't really talk like that. No, and they, and they don't speak like that when they're in trauma. She's in trauma. Uh huh. Um, they're they're all under duress. I mean, there's so many different variants, and then you hear the the attorneys going off on the cops, and we know without any failure that it was not the cops that ordered ordered the no knock warrant. Cops do not have that, quote, authority to order a no-knock warrant. That's all the judges and attorneys, corporate counsel. And um, it's quite profound to see corporate counsel rolling on the cops again. That is not the first time. I had a conversation with Scott K. Summers out of McKenna County, Illinois. And he rolled Corporate right over. council attorney in a suit and tie. Right. And he rolled right over on law enforcement. It told me to go after law enforcement, not corporate counsel. I need yeah. to be suing law enforcement. And I, you know, I kept trying to explain, no, 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 we're not going to be, you know, telling any lies here. We're not, we're going to be straight up with each other. He's a county conservator of McHenry County because the United States Incorporated is bankrupt and depraved. Scott K. Summers ran for treasurer. He was going to be the one tricking people out at the back end and the front end as a conservator because the treasury or the, um, sorry, not treasurer, secretary of state is the clearinghouse that is clearing the books on bankruptcy. And um, right. Scott K. Summers was running for Secretary of State on top of being the Guardian, on top of being the County Conservator. And well, that's preposterous. Yeah, he said right in that conversation he has to diagnose, he has to diagnose human beings in order to discharge congressional bankruptcy. Now, to the, those diagnoses are all the psychiatry's babies. They go hand in hand. That's why everybody's finding themselves in these new mental health courts where they find themselves ordered to take psychological evaluation. It's a eugenics program, program that was initiated 
not by Hitler, but by the American Congress. By 1924, Congress had implemented the Racial Integrity Act. And then it called for, you know, actions of psychiatry and sterilization of mentally ill. Congress and the psychiatrists had been racking it in forever. I mean, it was a psychiatrist behind Hitler back in 33 when he joined in with the uh, Confederacy through the Act of, act of Enablement. We should have a contest of the, you know, the whoever can guess the number of times that he says preposterous in that video accurately. <laughs> when an all expense vacation to see Scott sit K. Summers behind bars when he gets him thrown in there, <laughs> and then and then ask him if, if it's preposterous. Yeah, he felt so, so what do you think about being behind the bars there, Mr. Summers? It's preposterous! <laughs> You're not even an attorney. Well, no, duh. I don't <laughs> think like you. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. He said, You're not even an attorney like it's a bad thing. Right, right. You're not an attorney like me. <laughs> of course. Only attorneys not. can do this sort of thing and know what we're talking about and. You need to have your attorney call me. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what got him out there before, is the attorney or the attorney in the black dress. Everywhere you turn around, this is the striking thing that came out of the evidence we extracted through the course of all this. Much of it's up on YouTube in the public domain, um, and, and the rest of it's in the documentation. Uh, the, uh, you know, everywhere you turn, well, you're going to have to... You know, hire an attorney. Uh, <laughs> oh, we got a we we got a problem here with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, this this void uh, uh, order that these the cops are following. Well, you better uh, get an attorney. <laughs> Call the marshals up. Yeah, we got. Well, you're gonna have to talk to your attorney. You should get an attorney. Everybody. Everywhere you go, Everybody. get an attorney. And it's like, you know, I mean these these cockroaches. Uh, you know, they ought to just have an attorney come in when you're born, you know. And say, well, you have to have an attorney to be born. They do. It's the attorneys who are just sitting on the board of trustees at the hospital. That's what it's all about. We're yeah, all but they hide in the back room. shadow somewhere. They don't come into the birthing room, you know. No, and it's all about delivery. Library and season. All of these presentations. So we did not get an attorney except for uh, we got all the attorneys on the hook now for the congressional debt it's their debt <laughs> so that's our that's our uh, method of getting an attorney <laughs> we dumped them right in the holding corporation in place of you fine and proper human beings out there that had been unlawfully uh, held in the holding corporation since 1929 and it went global under uh, 1941 uh, Atlantic Charter and then of course through Bretton Woods they facilitated more of that. Yep, under reservation and, and uh, through the IMF and the uh, Federal Reserves and then uh, 1954 is when, it, or 53 is when it really ramped up with that uh, uh, mutual defense treaty with the Republic of Korea. Yeah, Republic of Korea, right. Not North Korea or South Korea, but the Republic of Korea, so... Right. That's when they started betting on everything and hedging everything, putting everything through the Gambling Commission. Now, there's your evidence right there that it's all a facade about all these borders and divisions and, you know, I mean, you, when, you, when you cross state lines and uh, cross the border into a quote-unquote another country, uh, does it look any different? I mean, is there a big giant line there? Well, well, if the attorney said to put up a fence or something like that, I mean, there, there it is. But naturally, I mean, these things are uh, a fictional creation of the attorney. There are no borders except for what the attorneys create. It's, it's you know, shutting it's off the kingdom. policy of the attorney's right to uh, end up shutting off your kingdom. You know, and a wealth extraction mechanism created by these cockroaches for and by the cockroaches that call themselves lawyers and attorneys. 
And that's all they are. They're just parasites. They're the only predator of humankind. And many of them are running for office. And, of course, they're already in office because somebody voted for them. Uh, and the vote, voter turnouts are going down and down and down, which is good to see. Uh, but it needs to go down to zero, in my opinion. Well, that doctrine of elections is that they can only have a right or a benefit to property that they already own by election, if they're electing something. That means you only get one, a right or a benefit out of property that human beings already own. And by giving up your benefits and accepting a right, that's beneficium abstinendi. As defined by their beautiful law there. Right. Not only that, but you're abjuring the realm. Right. And that's what it is. You're giving up your right to be the heir by election. Yeah. Attorneys, attorneys, attorneys. So, like, elect that form of government and you have the right to have an attorney appointed for you. <laughs> How's that working out for you? Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, police say note and gun found with Mayfield's body. Now, this is, of course, in reference to uh, the, uh, he was a Tea Party guy mm -hmm. that allegedly committed suicide. Let's just read this one here. We got pulled up at WLOX.com, Jackson, Mississippi. Okay, and uh, Mississippi News Now. Attorney Mark Mayfield was found dead Friday morning at his home in the Bridgewater subdivision in Ridgeland, Mississippi. Authorities say his wife called authorities around 9 a.m. and told them her husband had just shot himself. Police found his body in a storage room inside the room with the gunshot wound to his head. They also located the gun and, according to the police chief, a note with the body. We see no signs of foul play at this time. It's an active death investigation going on. We have recovered a firearm from the scene. We have one gunshot wound to the body of Mr. Mayfield. We're still working with investigators at this time and the family members trying to put the pieces of the puzzle back together to find out what led to this point this morning, said Lieutenant John Neal of the Ridgeland Police Department. An autopsy will be performed. Friends and political allies also say they were shocked to learn of Mayfield's death. Uh, Chris McDaniel issued this statement. Regardless of recent allegations made against his character, Mark Mayfield was a fine Christian man who was always respectful and kind. But wasn't he an attorney? No, it was just a mess. I think that something happened. He was in a in a storage room when they found his body. Uh, let's see. He he has one of the most polite and humble men I've ever met in politics. He was a loving husband, father, a pillar of his community, and he will be missed. We are saddened by his loss, and we send our thoughts and prayers to his wife and his family and friends. Mayfield's friend Bill Billingsley. Said I was devastated. Mark was ever was. I mean, he was a very good friend of mine. He did a lot of work for a lot of campaigns, and it was very sad to hear that he ended his life the way he did. He was a good guy. I don't know what else to say. I don't think anyone should have to reach the end of their life in that manner. In May, the 57-year-old was arrested and charged with conspiracy in relation to a political scandal. Like I said, one of the good things about him was that he was a good campaigner. Yeah. Sounds like political cannibalism. If, if you were asked to speak about somebody that died around you, would you... I mean, that's not even something that you would say. Right. Well, yeah, these are attorneys talking about one of their own and... Right. Sounds a lot like cannibalism. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's see here... So he was a board member of the Central Mississippi Tea Party. Uh, See, Mayfield is uh, accused of providing detailed instructions about where 
Rose Cochran's room was located. He had access to that information because his mother had been a resident of the family before she passed away. Governor Phil Bryant has sent out a statement about today's news. Deborah and I are saddened to hear of the loss of Mark Mayfield. He was a longtime friend and he will be missed. Our prayers go out to uh, him and his family in this tragic moment. State of a statement of State Delbert Hausman sent his this response. Mark Mayfield was a friend and effect an effective attorney. Yes, listen to these descriptions. It was a hit. They called it out. Now they're saying we were really good friends with him, but they can't even describe the guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, sick. A devoted family man, and he was deeply committed to the state of Mississippi and to her country. Well, he's deeply sick. committed to offsetting congressional bankruptcy, then, wasn't he? Sick. The whole thing is. He will be missed. Hit. Lynn and I pray for his family during this difficult time. Uh, Rep. Greg Harper offered this. I am deeply saddened on the passing of Mark Mayfield. He was a dear friend. To many people, and such an incredible father and husband, our late fathers were longtime friends and sat next to each other uh, each week at the Tuesday men's lunch at First Baptist of Jackson. He didn't even say that he was his friend. He said he was a friend of many. Yeah. Holy <laughs> moly, this guy was just hit, and they're all trying to convince the sheeple that they were his friends. That's a creepy story. So you think he was suicided, is what you're saying? Yeah. That sounds creepy. Um, well, it is kind of interesting. Um, creepy. He was a very good friend to many. Not my friend. Let's see. He's got a suit and a tie. Okay. Uh -huh. Classics, uh, classic uh, tell telltale signs that he might be uh, psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. And he was an attorney. So, I mean, that says it all. And, hmm. So, there you go. I mean, so we'll see what comes up on the autopsy. But, you know, it looks like they got this one sewn up. But, uh, there is... Something suspicious about it there, to say the least, with that recent conviction. Right, and, and charges and everything else, because he was going to roll on everybody, and now they're saying that he was a really good friend within the guild. Yeah, he was going to roll on him, but he was a really right. good friend. That's what, what happened, because he was going to roll on him. Uh, they had targeted him first, and then he was going to squeal on the guild, and so the guild stepped in and said, well, oh no, he was a very good friend, and... That one referred to him as going to a church, but he's, he didn't say that he went to church with him. He just dropped that out there as something to put in the sheeple mind, like they were all good guys. Yeah. It's really, really interesting to read these stories lately. Yeah. Well, that one, the sad one on Hillary, you know, because she was broke when they left the White House, according to her book. Yeah. But China refuses to... Uh, pitch it there it was turned down for sale in china so poor hillary and bill it sounds like they're gonna be hungry maybe yeah poor <laughs> bill and hillary my goodness you know if you folks out there got a couple million dollars to spare to you know help support them in their time of need uh yeah so I mean, they're, they're making a big spectacle on the mainstream media, too. I noticed on, I think it was Fox News and the radio today, is hearing callers talking about what a joke that was, that, that she didn't have the audacity to to say that, you know, they're, they're broke like that. Right. Ridiculous on his face. Uh, the, the pub, even the general public aren't buying it. Good. And it was it was funny to see that though that uh, quote hard choices was turned down for sale in China. Yep. Sounds like she's she's on a run of bad luck or something, you know. Poor poor them, half a million dollar houses and things. It's hard to live like Hillary and Bill live. 
Yep, yeah, alright, what do you got there? Crazy days. I'm trying to get something loaded up, but it's not, uh. I don't really want to go anywhere right now with my internet for some reason. Ooh, there was a law graduate, um, an up and coming attorney. Law graduate Rhiannon Brooker jailed over false rape, rape claims on the BBC.com this week. It was interesting to come across that one. I'll read a little bit. A law graduate who falsely accused her boyfriend of rape as an excuse for failing her exams has been jailed for three and a half years. Rihanna Brooker, 30, was convicted at Bristol Crown Court of perverting the course of justice. She claimed Paul Fensom, 46, had beaten her, forced her to have sex, and also caused her to miscarry. She also faked injuries to suggest he hit her. Brooker faked the rape claims as an excuse for failing her law exams. It's just foul, but uh, it's, it's just in Revelation that they're going to be held accountable for this kind of thing. Right. I'd like to see, you know, much more than three years, but I'm sure that, you know, by the time her sentence is up, there'll be more imagine, imaginatory things that can occur, as as you know. I mean, it, one day before her sentence expires, oh, you violated. know, sorry, we found no charge here. Right, violated. Because it's foul, you know, that's, that's something that's... One of my pet peeves, I've watched this for years and witnessed so many false allegations. And a false allegation of rape can produce up to a 20, 25, 30 year sentence in prison for a male. And when females are making these false allegations, that's what they should get in return for false allegations if they're caught. The same amount of time because it ruins the male. It doesn't just ruin his life when he goes to jail. It ruins everything that he is. To be known as, um, such as some of these false claims of pedophilia or whatever else, that's the worst thing you can do to anybody, and destructive as, as anything. And um, it's nice to see these liars now being held accountable. Well, let's see here. Speaking of throwing the cops under the bus, the attorney's website, policemisconduct.net, has uh, six reports of police misconduct track for Wednesday, June 25th as follows. Update King County, Washington. The police corruption investigation has spread to an officer at the Seattle Police Department. The SPD found one of its own officers linked to a budding drug theft and prostitution scandal. The SPD officer is accused of buying testosterone pills from a King County deputy. Indianapolis, Indiana, captain arrested on preliminary charges of operating vehicle while intoxicated. Bloomington, Illinois, police department captain was arrested on prelimin preliminary charges of operating a vehicle while intoxicated. Update in Wood River, Illinois, a now former police officer charged with official misconduct is now facing a lawsuit claiming he used a cell phone number obtained through his job to send sexually suggestive texts to a woman. Salem, Oregon, a now former Captain State Police resigned from his position after he pled guilty to fueling a personal vehicle using a department-issued fuel card. Camden County, New Jersey, police officer has been removed from street duty and is facing drunken driving charges after he allegedly drove a pickup truck through three street signs, struck a building, and knocked down a neon sign. Wow, that doesn't sound like... Uh but Sounds like he was inebriated. Cops. Yeah. There's a judge charged in San Mateo County, uh, California, too. From ContraCoastedTimes.com, San Mateo, Mateo County DA, judge charged with DUI, had 0.12 blood alcohol content. Redwood City, a San Mateo County judge arrested on suspicion of DUI late last month was charged with the crime when the district attorney learned his blood alcohol content was 0.12 percent, one and a half times the legal limit. Assistant Presiding Judge Joseph Scott, 63, was charged with misdemeanor driving under the influence Wednesday, more than two weeks after he was pulled over for swerving between lanes on northbound Highway 101. 
District Attorney Steve Wagstaff said the second highest ranking judge in the county was alone in his car when he was stopped around 12.30 a.m. May 24th at Woodside Road. The judge was reportedly asked to step out of the car when the Redwood City police officer smelled alcohol in his breath, Wagstaff said. He failed both a sobriety test and a blood alcohol test that acts similar to a breathalyzer. It's interesting to read that. That was a judge out there. Huh. Well, to BaltimoreSun.com, founder of Baltimore County Insurance Company arrested. Ooh. U.S. says XCO made false statements in scheme to inflate indemnities financial standing. Uh, the founder of Baltimore County Insurance Company was arrested Wednesday in connection with an alleged scheme to make it appear that the firm, now being liquidated by a Delaware court, had millions of dollars in cash it did not actually possess. Jeffrey Cohen, 39, former CEO of Nightclub and Bar Insurer Indemnity Insurance Corp., was indicted by a federal grand jury Tuesday on charges of making false statements to an insurance regulator. The indictment was unsealed Wednesday as government agents raided his house in Reister Town. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy, I guess, right? Uh, an attorney who has represented Cohen in the past could not be reached for comment. Charges relate to Cohen's claim to Delaware regulators that the company had $5.1 million in unencumbered cash at Susquehanna Bank, according to documents filed in U.S. District Court in Baltimore and Denny's physical headquarters in Sparks, but it's domiciled for regulatory purposes in Delaware. Four-page indictment offers few details, but it refers to an indictment laid out in court filings in the Delaware liquidation case. Well, bankruptcy case. Yeah, so, um, let's see if there's anything else good in here. And in order of finding that the lower court did not violate Cohen's due process right, Delaware Supreme Court ruled in April that he submitted a form to regulators that appeared to have been faxed from Susquehanna's bank confirming the account balance but was not in fact from the financial institution. Oh, so it's all fakery. Yeah, that's like bank robbery. Yeah. Okay, but you know, uh, these, these people just have gotten away with this stuff for so long, they just think they can go on and on and on and on. Uh, when state insurance investigators sought to reach the representative who supposedly signed the form, Cohen thwarted the insurance department's inquiries by providing a false post office box, telephone number, fax number, and email address. <laughs> he just makes this stuff up. <laughs> That's what the Delaware court ruled. The insurance department's investigation uncovered a similar scheme involving an account allegedly held at Royal Bank of Canada, Barbados, as well as additional misrepresentations in indemnities financial statements that hid its true financial condition. Oh, oh, come on. The Royal Bank of Canada, that's one of the ones, uh, the board members of the... Um, Corporation Council. This one is a cannibalism, a big cannibalism. So Corporate Council is cannibalizing the insurance. That's what it looks like. That's just funny. Oh my goodness. Wow. Let's see. Well, going on, I guess, um, in summary, the charges carry a maximum penalty of 15 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. Ooh, this is like, remember Capone? They did the same thing with Capone. Capone was running booze for uh, Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch is also on the board of governors or the board at the Association of Corporate Council. It always has been. And um, Capone was, was a good fall guy. And this is exactly, this is identical to what happened with Capone. So they put on a better show with Capone, of course, and said he was killing people and involved with dirty business. And they made movies about what a bad guy he was. Right. Everybody knew he was a bad guy. No, he wasn't a bad guy. Before that, he was he was in line with them. I mean, he was a bad guy. He was in line with the Confederacy, but he was right. a low-level Confederate member. And, and when he got cannibalized, I mean, everybody, that's what everybody saw, but that was cannibalism. 
He wasn't really a criminal. Not like they presented, not separate from the Confederacy. So, it's the uh, wrapping this one up. In a January interview, Cohen denied Delaware's fraud allegations. He said the company was financially sound and preparing to go public when regulators took it over. Right. A move that the <laughs> uh, that he alleged in his short-lived Maryland lawsuit was retribution because Absolutely. he supported one of the Delaware oh insurance God, commissioners. funny. Primary opponents. Yeah. So they came in, in 2012. They, right. The attorneys came in and took over his corporation for him. They just raised his insurance corporation. In a Delaware court terrible. filing, he accuses the state of running the insurance company into the ground after stepping in. I will quite literally spend the rest of my life and every dollar to my name fighting this, he Aww, said. Aw, he's Job. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Baltimore County uh, gets... Uh, finds Job. Wow. Wow, that's so sad to watch them cannibalize each other. It's interesting, but that was harsh. And he doesn't even get it. Yeah. Well, I guess he, he shouldn't have, number one, um, played with the Confederacy. Yeah, played with the Confederacy. Number two, he should be listening to our radio show, but right. too late for you now. Oh. It's too late. There's no repentance. There's no, no going back. Uh, judge charged with hindering boyfriend's arrest question for authenticity of evidence. All right, and this is over at uh, NJ.com. I'm going to stand for New Jersey because this is out of New Brunswick. A Middlesex County Superior Court judge charged with hindering her boyfriend's apprehension for robbery is questioning the validity of some of the state's evidence against her. In a motion filed in Superior Court in Somerville, Carlia Brady's attorney. Well, she has a she has a straw man for the straw man. Yep, and let's see. Uh, There's already a cognitive judgment. Isn't that pretty? The straw man for the straw man, I like that. Yeah, so so in the motion filed in Superior Court in Somerville, Carlia Brad Brady's Carlia Brady's attorney want a judge to compel the Somerset County Prosecutor's Office to produce for them authentic versions of the voicemails the judge left for the Woodbridge Township Police Department. It's ridiculous. Mm. It's probably through an electronic system, so she's playing the you know, attorney work product doctrine game. Yes. Yes. Uh, we have not received in discovery authentic versions of the voicemail, said Brady's attorney, Robert uh, Schreibel. What we have received purports to be copies of the voicemails. We're looking to compel through court order the inspection and retrieval of the voicemails in a forensically acceptable way. Right. Because, you know, she didn't really do what she's evidenced to have done. Now we got to play attorney work product doctrine see if we can get her out of it. It's retarded. Schreibel said the voicemails are central to the prosecution and defense of this matter. Brady has been charged with two counts of hindering the apprehension of a fugitive for allegedly harboring Jason Protnicki, 42, in her Woodbridge home for about an hour on June 11, 2013, never making any attempt to contact law enforcement according to the complaint filed against her. See, so what does the voicemails have to do with that? Right. <laughs> Attorney word product doctrine, that's what it, what it always boils down to. At the time, Prontnicki was wanted in the armed robbery of an old bridge pharmacy, authorities said. Brady, who was sworn in April 5, 2013, and assigned to the Civil Division in Middlesex County, pleaded not guilty to the charges in June 2013, soon after her June 11, 2013 arrest. Brady was suspended without pay from her $165,000 a year job. Uh, well, that's good job. Pretty, that's a pretty good salary considering all the money they make on the back end too. Let's see, the, the case was transferred out of Middlesex County to Somerset County by the State Attorney General's Office. Shrivel said Brady called the Woodbridge Police Department several times to report her boyfriend and we believe she fulfilled 
fulfilled any duty she had to report her boyfriend when she made those calls. He would not say why the defense believes the copies of the voicemails they received from the prosecution were not authentic, nor would he say whether he believes the prosecutor's office and or the police are attempting to cover up the evidence that would be favorable to his client. A spokeswoman for the Somerset County Prosecutor's Office could not be reached for comment. They never do that. They never alter evidence or anything. So, let's see. Protnicki has been charged with armed robbery and weapons offenses for allegedly threatening an Old Bridge Pharmacy owner with a crowbar on April 29, 2013, and demanding drugs. Nothing was taken during the attempted robbery and no one was injured, police said. He pleaded guilty in November 2012 to receiving stolen property from two doctors and a charge of using nine forged prescriptions from one of those doctors in an attempt to obtain Roxadone, Oxycodone, and Xanax. Court documents state he was sentenced to three years probation in February 2013 but violated his probation in part because he tested positive for opiates. He was arrested June 11th as he left Brady's Coolidge of, of Avenue home, according to the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, let's see, during 2013 July, bail hearings for Procknicki, his attorney Stuart White said his client was living with Brady for the previous year. So, so this uh, judge's uh, boyfriend here is, um, <laughs> you know, she, she picked the real winner there, didn't she? An agent, maybe? Yeah, pro possibly, yeah. Uh, let's see, Shrivel's co-counsel, Walter Tempone, confirmed the judge and Protnicki were dating and lived together in her home for at least four months prior to their arrest, but Tempone said Brady was unaware of Protnicki's case involving stolen prescription drug forms. He alleged probation violation and alleged armed robbery, learning about them only after the judge's arrest. Shrivel said there is no date set for a judge to hear the motion he filed. Prontnicki was held in Middlesex County Jail in lieu of $100,000 bail. He was transferred to the Somerset County Jail on May 29th, according to Middlesex County Jail Records. Wow. Cowboy So, yeah. She only knew him four months before they busted them both. Yeah. So that's interesting. That it, it looks like that guy was sick on her. Maybe she didn't meet him by half a chance. Yeah. As we know, a lot of this stuff isn't so uh, happenstance. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, let's see. Uh, you want to take a break at the, at the top of the hour after the next one here? I've got one from Washington Post. It's kind of nice to read. Italian priest charged with soliciting sexual favors from desperate refugees. I thought you ought to hear that one since you did the... Um, Malayan refugees last summer, and then of course, um, yeah, keeping so up sad. to date with that, with the action of Hearts and Minds, the the war tactic used to garner people over to that side, and um, these things. I, I'm glad to see the Italian priests, any kind of priest or any kind type of attorney or politician charged with these especially for you know preying on refugees I mean that the, the um, oh goodness the, the uh, plaque on the Statue of Liberty it, it chills me to the bone now although years ago I really liked the poem give me your tired your poor your huddled masses yearning to be free I, I love that until I realize what it really meant they are preying on the tired the poor the huddled masses yearning to be free and that's the action of politics. Give me some more plebeians to prey on. Come on, get on in here, little plebeians. Right, they prey on the weakest and, and most meek in our in our habitat. Our oh, place. are you poor and meek and and are you a woman? Oh, we got special rights for you. Come on in. Yeah. And that Take care of you. Do you need an attorney? Yeah. How about we give you some food stamps? You come over here, I'll give you some food stamps, and, and we'll go this way. And um, it's just it's terrifying to see these things, you know, but, it, but it's beautiful to see them being held accountable, finally, for the actions. A Jefferson County Public Schools teacher is accused last year of having sex with a student faces additional sodomy charges after investigators say 
He had sexual intercourse with a ch uh, child between 2008 and 2010. Scott Quisenberry, 56, is charged with four counts of sodomy with a child under the age of 14, according to an indictment handed down Wednesday. The lead sodomy happened between March 11, 2008 and March 10, 2010 in Jefferson County. Uh, he was charged last year to having intercourse with the student from 2009 to 2012. The student was between 13 and 15 during that time. So that's at the uh, Courier Journal. So, yeah, so they're starting to get uh, some accountability. Uh, you know, that's the part of education we're talking about there. Absolutely, and that's where it needs to lie with the indoctrination camps themselves the directors which were psychiatrists that was interesting to see this week too um, the psychiatrist came out and said oh it's the parents in the schools that are asking us to diagnose their children yeah yeah no, it's it's always been the psychiatrist introducing these things to the children not only the drugs but the diagnosis weapons used as well as um, every other facet of, of uh, psychiatry itself it's at the direction of psychiatry the psychological industry it's not at the direction of the school the school is the puppet for the master and one of the puppets is that principal agent that's there in the school and makes sure that everything's going well and they have the best productivity out of human children that can be squeezed out of the child well let's see here we've got three minutes left are we going to top the hour yeah Tennessee teacher charged with killing boyfriend. How's that for you? Look at that mugshot. Isn't she a cutie? Yeah. Special education teacher in Tennessee is charged in the shooting death of her boyfriend. Stephanie Cole, 36, who taught at Martin Elementary School in Martin, Tennessee, was arrested Friday, June 20th, and charged with first degree murder in the shooting death of her boyfriend, 31 year old Louis Tamaro local construction businessman. Cumberland County Sheriff Jerry Jackson told CBS News Crimes Cider the shooting took place at Coles Home and on Accia Drive in the area of Lake Tansy, a resort community in Cumberland County around 4.45 a.m. on June 20th. Uh, neighbor and fellow El uh, Martin Elementary School teacher Kim Smith said she heard a gunshot around 4 a.m and went next door to investigate sheriff uh jackson confirmed to grime cider crime cider that smith was first to find tamaro's body the crossville chronicle quoting a warrant in the case said smith found the remains in a tote in the backyard oh smith reportedly called 911 and told the dispatcher that she found cole with blood in her arms Cole also allegedly said, uh, told Smith that she had just killed her boyfriend. When deputies arrived at the home, Tamara was found dead of a single gunshot wound uh, in, in the backyard of Cole's home. Cole was taken into custody at the scene. Josh Devine, a spokesperson for the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, told Crime Cider that Tamaro and Cole recently broke up. She apparently moved out of Cole's home and authorities believe the couple was attempting to reconcile when he was murdered. Multiple media outlets reported that Tamaro and Cole had dated uh, for eight years. Cole is being held without bond in Cumberland County Jail. She's scheduled to appear in court July 7th. We're going to have to watch this one and see what kind of evidence is there because it sounds like uh, they took out a local businessman and blamed her because that that makes the state the heir because they were dating they weren't uh, married so I didn't hear about any children or anything and it sounds like probate court maybe maybe after his estate right he was a local businessman so we'll be back after the break folks stick around that's right we'll be right back and we'll listen to some brought up to believe and we're back this is the public law radio show is heard every week this time we're talking uh, 3 a.m. GMT mm -hmm. to 5 a.m. that's uh, 
10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for those on this side of the pond. And um, this is a worldwide broadcast. Uh, listen to the feed at tennisor.com or uh, No Borders. No Borders Radio dot co dot uk dot org or Tammy Pepperman dot org. So we were talking about uh, teachers when we left off. I got one more here, um, quick one. A Largo teacher caught in restroom with teen boy, Largo, Florida. Fourth grade, fourth grade Largo teacher has been charged with sending nude images to a teenager after they were caught together in a rec center bathroom. Oh. Largo police on Monday were called to the Highland Recreation Center, 400 Highland Avenue, after a report that a woman and a juvenile were seen entering a unisex restroom on the second floor, police said. The woman and boy remained inside for about 10 minutes before police arrived. So, uh, well, it took 10 minutes for the police to get there, huh? They were on that. Leslie R. Brown, 45, a teacher at Fugit elementary school told police she goes to the gym three days a week and the 17 year old boy is her workout partner and spotter both denied anything occurred in the bathroom said they locked the door because they heard voices and didn't want to appear as if something was going on yeah so both denied the sexual activity and the boy's mother picked him up uh, later, police found naked pictures of Brown on his cell phone, including dirty text messages. Brown was then arrested on two felony counts of transmission of material harmful to minors. She's now out on bond. She also got a trespass warning from staff at the recreation center. And one moving violation. Well, wait, wait a second. She's still teaching or what? Uh, let's see... Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't say. They put her back around children, folks. Yep. Let's see. Um, Pinellas County School released following statement on the allegations on the allegations regarding Leslie Brown. Pinellas County Schools is conducting an investigation into the allegations against Leslie R. Brown, a fourth grade teacher. Yaddy yaddy yaddy. She's been employed uh, with the county school district for six years and has no prior discipline record. Alleged incident involving Miss Brown did not occur on Pinellas County Schools property and did not involve one of her students. Details surrounding Miss Brown's arrest are being handled by the Largo Police Department. No, she's around special ed babies, not fourth graders. She's a fourth grade special ed teacher. Right. Come on, everybody. She's got to be uh, gotten out of the school. If there's evidence that she's harming children, she needs to be removed from the ability to be around children. Yeah, a lot of stuff in Florida going on, too. There's a lawyer who got charged down in there in Florida here. Uh, prominent Pinellas lawyer, Robert Tankle, charged with molestation. And uh, this one comes from the Tampa Bay Times. And uh, I lost it. <laughs> My computer went dead. All right. So, so you got something you want to talk about anyways. Well, the, the level of um, psychiatrists that are being taken into the system and the gameplay in these uh, quote mock trials, these kangaroo courts, um, and you can find this at uh, TammyPepperman.org. I, I did an article this morning about uh, the Foundling Fathers. This uh, DailyMail.co.uk Yale-educated addiction psychiatrist is charged with making and selling ecstasy with her boyfriend in a basement lab. So she's. She's pumping out, you know, these, uh, are those relative to the date rape drugs and, uh, and 
such as that nature, the ecstasy is a derivative of uh, uh, emodium, like uh, it's an antidiuretic, uh, anti so it'll drown people uh, quickly. That's why it was made illegal or unlawful years and years ago. Before it was ecstasy, it was used as an antiemetic. Um, and um, that's uh, it's kind of a low charge for these things when you look at the effect of the drugs that she's creating and um, it's nice to see her being held accountable at least did you see that one from Africa the Pistorius psychiatrist had a heart attack psychiatrist has a heart attack yes uh, let's see that's Jonasberg psychiatrist who evaluated Oscar Pistorius had a heart attack on Thursday night it's last night, I guess, causing a delay in the handling, uh, the handing over of the Paralympians' psychic, psychiatric evaluation report, reported reports on Friday. Yeah, it was interesting because they were waiting on that to facilitate this trial. <coughs> Excuse me. And the interesting part is that throughout my walk, I've seen this over and over again. At one point, um, we were within this is years ago a case of false allegations and um, one of the social workers was actually going to testify against a false uh, accuser and they said she had a heart attack and, and then eventually they said that uh, they, they just have to go on with the trial without her anyway and of course that swung in the favor of the false accuser although the one who is false accused was never charged of anything uh, the court process was still hold, held over his head, and, and this looks like another uh, gameplay of, of the attorneys, you know, delaying things. and. So, all oh, shucky darns, he died, and man, we just well, can't go is, forward right now. This one says he's he's been ha hospitalized or something. Um, what's funny is that due to Oh, this, he's not dead? He's just no, hospitalized. Due to this heart attack thing... Um, it's saying that the handing over of the Paralympian psychi psychiatric evaluation is going to be delayed. Well, why is that? He's a psychiatrist. He has a clinic or some kind of operation there. Why isn't somebody else giving it over? And you can see the, the gameplay, you know, from this level when you're looking at it in that context. You know, they're delaying, delaying, delaying. It costs him more for his attorneys. He's got to pay more. He's got to pay other experts. This is the redistribution of all known wealth. They're redistributing it out of whatever coffer it's in, such as this guy's uh, pocket or his bank account, and the attorneys are getting it through this process, the, the practicing law. Now, that is interesting, yeah. And let's see what else we got. Sorry about that. I'm kind of slow going here. Psychiatrists, though, were the ones that, well, like, they have a lot of functions in the court process. The number one process back in the beginning, um, I think uh, there's a psychiatrist or something. Um, in the garden that came in before the stake, wasn't there? Right. And that's that's <laughs> basically what it is. It's the action of lysing the mind um, at a biogenesis, meaning away from life, mind, and soul. And um, that psychiatrist comes up with concepts. They're concept designers, concept design engineers. And in order to des design a product, psychiatry is involved in the formation process formulating these new fictions the man woman boy girl and facilitating the stock market that's who creates the market itself is the action of psychiatry because they are con concept designs these are forming things in the mind they're little engineers yeah like Borders. Right. Fences. This is what shuts up the kingdom. And 
It's nothing more than a, a, a revenue generation schematic for the attorneys. Wow, on this side we're the United States, on this side you're Canada. To go over there, you must you must have the proper pay, paperwork and um, you know. We'll shut up this further with more and more laws and immigration laws, and we'll have some more things that we need to put in your path. They require you to take an oath, an unlawful oath, just to get a passport. Right. Now, here they do it down at the post office, which I find interesting. Right, and that, that involves all of the fictions of identity. After they teach you to be the fiction or a fictional creation, an, an informed object or thing, they're charging you because they own the patent on those things. That's called intellectual property because these are the ideologies of psychiatrists and law makers and the practitioners of law that worship them called attorneys yeah the question remains on what day did God create the attorney and couldn't he have rested on that day as well <laughs> he didn't it's is it the psychiatrist created the attorney. <laughs> the psychiatrist created man and woman. Oh, okay. And boy and girl and, and all of these fictional things. Ugly and beautiful. But, it's the thing that told you you were naked in the garden. But this one goes to 11. Right. This court process here I have goes to 11. Yeah. I'm waiting for a guru to come out with it. <laughs> I've got the new this goes to 11 process guaranteed gets you off the hook for anything the first thing you want to fill out is your doby gillis yeah yeah we don't do any of those crazy things, crazy things we yeah. just we we file a doby gillis and make sure that you click your heels together three times and repeat after me oh my goodness no there was a comment yesterday on one of the public <laughs> law youtube Posts. Uh, why don't you talk more about uh, the uh, process, the foundational documents, forgiveness, and appointment of executor? And the answer is that we did uh, read them both on your shows and my shows uh, a couple times, right. and talked about that for some time. But now you can find the uh, documentation and authorized documents either by going to TammyPepperman.org or ChooseYourSide.org just go to the authorized documents and look for a zip file foundation of the public law process and that has everything in it except for you have to get the cover letter for the uh, ordinance of estates that goes out it's uh, separate but it's in that same folder so yeah, you've got everything right there. Yeah, everything's. I wrote everything down, and it was about as clear as an explanation as uh, I could give you in the support for that. And then, obviously, you want to get into some of the older archives, and um, you know, it's it's not it's not like those three hundred page documents that they're. They're trying to tell you it's the right thing to do over at some of these uh, websites. What's that one? Uh, I know, some it, of them. Oh, Every it's, it's like over time. 200 pages uh, that they want you to uh, go through uh, and become a, a U.S. non resident citizen national or something, yeah, like, ridiculous. something ridiculous like that. Oh, my goodness. They're, they're, my God, what a bunch of paperwork for nothing. Right. But it looks good because it's a lot of paperwork. Remember that guy? Um, in Illinois uh, last year, I'm not going to say where, but um, he had like six inches of, of attorney documentation and he was so proud of it. He, he carried uh, that around like a badge. It was like a, a weight and measure. The, it cost me such and such amount of money for this much paperwork. Well, where did it get you? Nowhere. But I spent all this money. I had an attorney. You know, and it, it's so uh, profound to see those things and the they level of worship. So let's see. You have how many thousands of dollars did you pay for this stack of paperwork? That uh, it's just uh, your attorney delivering you up to the law merchant, anyways. 
I mean, uh, boy. Well, they're uh, visiting. They're you know been uh, still hammering on Hillary in the news. I've seen that. I'm I've, I'm still reeling on the um, whole book deal that went through that didn't go through. Sorry, in China and and. Um, you know that that video you did. I I really liked that one, um, Hillary Clinton child predator. And you know the funniest thing, you know, during this last week we've been watching things like voting and and things like this, and um, they're, they're showing on the mainstream media that there's some support for Hillary, but then our evidence says that there's absolutely no support for Hillary. I mean, no, there was no fallout. We, we came out with that video that said Hillary Clinton, child predator, and th there has been no pushback whatsoever. Everybody knows that she's a child predator. Nobody's arguing in her defense or anything. So what, what are they actually reporting in the mainstream? Well, the people following our YouTube channels are not following uh, the mainstream sheeple news so much, and they're not uh, too sold down the road of consensus reality the way it appears to me uh, and you have to be very careful of consensus reality because you know it's just like uh, all these popular uh, YouTube channels and popular videos and you know you see, you see what consensus reality is it's the stupidest stuff I'll get millions and millions of views um, I don't know what to say about that, other than that uh, your consensus reality is another tool um, of hearts and minds and uh, uh, psychological warfare going on. Now, Hitler's propaganda minister, uh, Joseph Goebel, he said if you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth, and, and we've seen a lot of that. More right. More than a lot of that. You know? And what they repeated forever. Right. You know, the United States is over here, Canada's over there, Australia's <laughs> over there. Because there's North Korea and South Korea. Okay, if you step over on this side of the line, you're in China. This big geographical area here is Russia. You know, and, uh, you know, human beings that don't create uh, borders and start drawing lines on things and... You know, I mean, with color crayons. Their house was built on sand. They drew all of those things with color crayons, called psychiatrists. And and you know what? Once you realize their book, it's just so profound because your your mind can actually rest and realize that. You know, look, the, these are all fictions. That that judge that's been standing over your shoulder your entire life, judging you. Those are because of concepts uh, you think you should be, or you think or believe you ought to be, or could be, if only. And, and it's been the psychiatrist driving you. Yeah, I just had a picture of that, that old saying, you know, about the monkey on your back. It was never a monkey. It was, it was an attorney. Right. Attorneys and psychiatrists. You know, That's they, what's on your back. Yeah. <laughs> From businessdictionary.com, concept engineering. It is a method for determining what features a product should have and what metrics or measures can be used to measure the quality or performance of the product based on analysis of consumer needs and preferences. The concept engineering process generally includes framing the project, collecting data, analyzing the data, and selecting actions. And that is all in the design of the silent weapon for quiet wars, because you have all of these characteristics that you're taking up from that tree of knowledge. You're, you're just taking in all of these concepts, taking them into the mind, and forming them in the mind and therefore they look like they might be real but a bank is not real a, a court is not real or relative 
unless it's actually a court, like a courtyard. Um, corporations, those are fictions. Attorneys are fictions. Ugly is a fiction. Pretty is a fiction. Beauty is a fiction. All of these things are different uh, definition defined words wherein those words are titles. If you garner the title ugly, what are you going to do? You have to earn the right to be pretty. Those are concepts. And somebody sold you those concepts in order to make money. Now, part of the um, journey that you're going to go through, I suggest that everybody reads The Great Radara, which is just a speech. Lycurgus by Plutarch. And then read about Lycurgus again, because Lycurgus, of course, was a concept. You can read about him in like Comedies or Lycurgus by Homer, Hesiod, the Homeric Hymns, and Homerica. And study the origins of these things, of speech, of the great rhetoric, of proclamations and proclaiming things. Um, it's, it's profound what has occurred upon humanity throughout the span of, quote, time. Even time is a concept. Uh, time zones are used for commercial, business, and social purposes. And that's another bindery that wraps around the human and, and as if it's a uh, millstone around your neck. And that's what these concept designers and attorneys gesticulating these concepts make rev derive revenue off of. Now if you look up the etymology in Washington, for example, it literally means, quote, a state of a man named Wasa. Okay, so here's your founding fathers. Founding fathers. Washington means the estate of a man named Wasa. Now, when you go to the etymology on the word vassal, it comes from Wasso, meaning young man, squire, Servant, servant, vassal, man, Irish is servant. And so Washington, one of the founding fathers, was your estate as a vassal patronizing something else because you're a servant to something else. So these are concepts. George Washington was a concept just as much as the United States of America was a style, meaning a chain of events or congressional actions. And we read that in the Gaunhausen Charter. It says in there that we can tell them all about these dead guys and they're going to believe us because they're going to forget in about five minutes. And yeah, you do. absolutely. That's Article 1 of the Gaunhausen Charter. Right. It said we can, we can tell them anything we want to. They're going to believe it. We're going to tell them they had forefathers, and this is what happened, and, and um, this is how So maybe these happen. guys existed, and maybe they didn't, is what you're saying. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's that possibility. If they did really exist, they really built it up as, uh, you know, uh, with the disclosure and the, the words here, you know, Washington. Right. And then the other ones, too. When you go back into the old charters... It wasn't just Washington back there. It looks like it was Shakespeare, and you have a whole bunch of others, like the Chamberlains. That word actually means something else. And um, you have to take a journey through etymology. And at TammyPepperman.org, if you go to the link for the Founding Forefathers, um, I put some etymology dictionaries in there, uh, Latin Dictionary, uh, the business dictionary and then the Greek and Latin roots in English so that you can see what these words actually mean and and such as Aristotle Aristo means the perfect one in Greek and Tolis which is Aristotle is 
Polis means cannot be battered. So that was also a concept. And, and when you go into the, uh, especially Nicomachean Ethics written by, supposedly by Aristotle, then that does define that he was indoctrinating the concept of ethics itself. And that, that's the uh, aristocratic uh, mentality. And, and going back to aristocratus, because aristo means the perfect one, and kratis means to control or possess. And so every title, every classification, it doesn't matter if you're elite, you're still up for grabs. You were given a title because you defend those titles. That's what it, it's, it's always been about in the garden. You give up the garden because you accept concepts from the, the snake that tells you you are naked. Okay, if, if you weren't naked and something wasn't wrong with you or you didn't have a flaw, according to the psychiatrist, the law merchant couldn't sell you anything and you'd never buy from the tree of knowledge. So first you have to be traumatized by the psychiatrist, then you can be sold concepts. That's the way in the game of politics, polycratus, to control or possess many. So it's kind of like these jokers get up there and say, we're going to give you all these words and phraseologies that are so grandiose and omnipotent that you will bow down and worship us. Dictionary. Isn't that the definition of dictionary to dictate something? <laughs> we now give you your rights. Yeah. And it's well, a bill. I, it's, it was a bill. You didn't get rights. You got billed for it. It's just an infringer. A person who interferes with one of the exclusive rights of a patent, copyright, or trademark owner. Which was always you to begin with, for the attorney came along and said, no, that's mine. Well, no, because you bought the concept. If if you buy something yeah. because you're pretty or because you're ugly or because you're whatever, if you're a male or a female, you're buying those concepts from the tree of knowledge. They weren't yours. They really literally have a patent on those words because they created them. They created the concept. That's how they cash in on it. So you go into court and you buy those concepts, or you go into a bank and buy the concepts, or you go to a hospital and buy those concepts, or, or to a doctor, you buy diagnoses every day. You can even buy the, the, a way to write you before you are in a prescription prescribing you. You can get drugs to make you something else that's more politically correct. And, and again, that, that thing that's created from prescription would be another patented product of the same human traffickers perpetrating genocide. You know, yeah, it is kind of uh, interesting how these criminal snake oil salesmen position themselves into uh, being the quote-unquote leaders. And what are they leading? They're, they're just like Pied Pipers, and they're not going anywhere good. They're, they're leading everybody to their demise because now they're overhead. This is the same thing that happened during Nazi Germany. Yeah, Megadeth did a song on it called Symphony of Destruction. Oh, I like that one. I don't know if I can play it on the borders. It is a good song, though. The words uh, basically are pretty, you know, pretty uh, descriptive as to what we're talking about here, actually. From Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, res, Latin, and civil law. A thing, an object, as a term of the law, this word has a very wide and extensive signification, including not only things which are objects of property, but also such as are not capable of individual ownership. Uh, see inst two one pr whatever that means. And in old English law, it is said to have a general import to uh, a general import comprehending both corporeal and incorporeal things of whatever kind, nature or species. Okay. And then we'll go down to the etymology and corporeal. Okay. Uh, Latin. Let's see. This is the adjective 
uh, definition of it. Uh, Latin corporeus of the nature of a body from corpus body, living or dead. From pi, croupies, from root, crep, body, form, appearance. Probably from a verbal root meaning to appear. Cognates, Sanskrit, let's see, uh, let's see, form, basically. Form, body is kind of what it's getting at. Right, and, and that's something that's so hard to uh, teach, you know, because a resident is a thing with an identity. A resident. So a resident is only a thing. They're calling you a thing, an object, a corporeal thing. Comprehended. That means taken with a grasping motion. Comprehension. To take with a grasping motion. And so when you are subscribing or underwriting, and you're claiming to be a resident, you're claiming to be property of whoever's house you are in. And at that time, if you're patronizing the House of Representatives, you live in the House of Representatives just as much if, as if it was the House of Gown still, at the Gown Housing Charter, or the House of Ursu when Ursu had it. Lombardi had it at one time. Um, now it's the House of Representatives. And that is the house you're claiming to live in when you're claiming to be a resident. The zip code sits in the house. And the way that it does that is that house has lower chambers called the House of Delegates, which has full control over the American Bar Association. And inside of the House of Delegates, then you have other chambers, as well as other chambers in the House of Representatives called chambers. Now you have the Chamber of Commerce in your community, which is a room of that house. So that extends that house out to everybody's zip codes, everybody's time zones, which is how they took it in the first place. They took it with time, in the meantime. And you'll find that in your court records that something happens in the meantime. That, that, that you're subscribing to live there. And everybody needs to stop patronizing. And those are words we see all the time and everybody dismisses them, basically, uh, and the same manner uh, what you're talking about in the Gelnhausen Charter. Right. The Gelnhausen Charter. Right. If you don't understand something or realize what it is, you just skip over it and you don't go back and analyze anything because of your education. They've taught you not to analyze anything. Not Don't look at the guy behind the curtain. Don't look at the guy behind the curtain. Don't read anything. Don't go look and see what that means. Just keep on drinking your lithium induced water, keep on doping up with carb comas and, and soma theory, and uh, you've got to wake up here. We talk about the awakening a lot. Uh, I, I personally enjoy uh, calling it the revelation because this is when everything is revealed to you. And this refers to you, God. The, the Lord God taught you that you are not God. And this refers to you specifically, the revelation. This is when everything is revealed. No, and just like it says in uh, Revelation 18:15, the merchants are wailing. Uh, they can't stand it that this information is coming out. You know, the, the, the more we present here on what a fallacy this whole idea of constitutional theory is uh, the more the constitution constitutions are saying oh we gotta have our first second third amendment rights and we gotta fight for our constitutional rights yeah, and and they're gonna sue uh, Obama now because he's violated the constitution you know and it's it's what they're selling here is the concept of uh, rights just all sorts of rights you they're selling ha hegemony the, yeah hegemony within hegemony the the control that's established through the use of media hegemony uh, is the action of controlling that and maintaining the status quo power structures 
And if you want more information on that, go study Gramsci, Antonio Gramsci, and his theory of hegemony, including the uh, creation of the civil and state society. He said, look, uh, you, you've got uh, uh, the state, which is by force, and you've got the citizenship or civil society, which was created by consent. Well, you cannot lawfully contract to consent if there is force involved. That, that uh, denies the um, offer and acceptance portions of contract law specifically and um, you know we, we, there there's always been an allowance for consent is presumed by law unless expressed dissent is made known and and that's why we're here we're telling you you need to expressly dissent you need to say no 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 I don't like these benefits I don't want you to put lithium in my water now it's a lawful maximum there, there are some unlawful maxims out there Absolutely. Like uh, the one about, uh, uh, you know, uh, that Oscar. nothing can interfere with a uh, private contract between right. two individuals. Right. Okay, no, that's fallacy because under the public law, if you harm somebody, then that overrides everything. Right, right. And, and if you abrogate the contract, that's the whole thing, is that attorneys have quashed the the entire aspect of contract law which is uh, by will that 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 fully allows free will if you adhere to the uh, foundation of contract law and um, we we see it every day a divorce a divorce means two voices it doesn't mean that somebody abrogated the contract and we saw that really swiftly move in in the 1980s when they brought in the uniform marriage and divorce act and said that there was going to be um, some no-fault divorce. No, that's that's not contract law. Wait a second, all of these married people, they never even stood up because they didn't realize what that was or something. But um, no-fault divorce, my goodness, a, a marriage is a contract. They're, they're right, and, and if you have a state certification <laughs> for that contract, then you got three parties involved. Right, and not just that. That contract, it's usually abrogated when somebody steps out of it, right? How, how can they design a court process that participates in no-fault divorce where everybody's just litigating and there's nothing uh, happening at the contract? You either abrogated the contract or you maintain the contract. There's two parties. One of them's at fault for abrogating the contract. The other one loses everything because... Uh, or the one that abrogated the contract loses everything because they are the one who abrogated the contract. And that's something that the attorneys just shuffled right under the table, put to the side, and ever since the 1980s, everybody's been under no fault. So all of these false allegations can occur. That's what prompts false allegations. Is the attorney influence in the first place? You go into court, and, and the attorney opens up with, oh, you both will have shared parenting now that, that that's one of the most perverted words there are it's not equal parenting it's shared parenting and we watched in the UK several years ago where a father got I think it was like two weeks a year visitation but that's considered shared parenting so the attorney is already pitting you right out the chute then it looks the mother in the eye, and she's used to the house and everything else, and it tells the mother, well, you know what, you guys are on equal footing, unless there's circumstances to prove otherwise. And the minute that is said, what happens? She jumps into self-defense, and she's like, oh my gosh, I better falsely accuse him. Yeah. But that's the attorneys doing that. Yes, Eve buys that, and yes, she is guilty of false allegations, but it's the attorney who's pitting her, the turning her. Yeah, we have a solution for that with the quit claim that uh, Rockle used in his documents and I used in mine. And, um, you know, that basically tells the state, okay, that's your property. Now you take care of it. 
And that's how it has to be. I mean, it's it's gotten so bad now where the female, she's been made lawless exactly as described in the first time around with Rome. And at that time, she was the destruction of humanity, destruction of society, destruction of community. And that was all within the same schematic. Her rights were reserved. She could do no wrong. She could take off with the kids 11, 1,200 miles away, claim domestic violence. Dad would never see him again unless he paid out the butt and all of these things. And that's exactly what was happening then. They were pushing the males out in the military. We're seeing custody cases being decided absolutely over the top of the Soldiers and Sailors Acts, protecting uh, those that are deployed overseas from this kind of predation. We're seeing those go right over the top of that. They're, they're not even seeing the protection of humanity first and foremost. They're seeing that business schematic of hurry up and let's get these kids off of these parents. Let's get them in these latchkey programs. Let's get them with these pedophile priests. We've got to get them raped in school. We've got to get them indoctrinated. Let's drug them up. Hurry up. We need some authority here to get them on Ritalin or, or ADHD or, or whatever other forms of manipulation they can put the children on. And they're going right over the top of all of the males again. Again. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's the same action that occurred uh, after the coronation charter. Right. Uh, King said, well, we've got to take care of all the women now. And Yeah, they've been praying on us since. And the king said, yeah, uh, don't you worry, we'll take care of the woman. And, uh, uh, oh, for you men, uh We've got a disturbance in the lower northwest uh, corner of the kingdom. You need to go out there and fight. Uh, yes, you're out number 10 to 1, but uh, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. And, you know, very few of the men came back or slowly got killed off in wars. And the king came and said, well, yep, I'll just take care of the uh, woman. And, you know, that's how he garnered all the estates. And it's the same thing today. The same thing they're doing today. The attorneys are creating all these wars over there over this these fictions that they created in the first place, which are uh, division of people by uh, language or uh, color or, or or some kind of uh, imaginary line drawn in the sand. And they say, "Well, we've got an incursion." Uh, or they're crossing over this border. You need to go over there and fight to the death for your country, man. And the men go, okay, I'm patriotic, uh, leaving, uh, protecting the rights of, uh, the, uh, United States. You know, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to make you sound or belittle you that got sold into this thing. We all got sold into this thing, uh, years ago and and I was part of the uh, patriotic mindset um, just not not but several years back and uh, but like uh, uh, Jesus says that uh, you know well there's a time for drinking your baby milk and there's a time um, you know where you got to put your big boy pants on okay and that's where we're at now everybody needs to put their uh, big person pants on her big people pants and uh, come out of her which is Babylon that's what he's talking about when he says come out of her Revelation 15 18 or 18 15 they're wailing because you know they're still in battle and that's that's their matriarchal system that they're sold into hook, line, and sinker if you're a law merchant, an attorney, lawmaker, doctor, psychiatrist, teacher, Federal Bureau of Investigation, CIA. Uh, the word Lord in entomology is a noun from the mid 1300s. Lavered, lovered. Uh, from Old English, Halford, master of a household, ruler, superior, also God, translated, translating uh, Latin, dominus, though Old English, driven, 
was used more often earlier half weird literally one who guards the loaves from have bread loaf see loaf uh, that's interesting weird keeper guardian see ward compare lady literally bread kneader and old English how theta household servant literally loaf eater modern monosyllabic from merged 14th century as an interjection from late 14th century Lord's Prayer from 1540s Lord of the Flies translates Beezlebub and was name of a 1954 book by William Golding to drink like a Lord is from 1620s Uh, wiki first Corinthians 6 all things are lawful unto me this is from verse 12 but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but I will not be brought under the power of any meats for the belly and belly for the meats but God shall destroy both it and them now the body is not for fornication but the Lord but for the Lord and the Lord for the body and God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his own power know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ shall I take shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot God forbid what know ye that we that he which is joined to a harlot's to 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 an harlot is one body for two saith he shall be one flesh but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit right and talking about the Lord and the delineation that Jesus maintained you know he says that God hath both raised up the Lord so shall he raise us up by his own power when you go to the uh, Constitution and read the first article wherein power is vested in a Congress, you have raised up the Lord God. And you know, Jesus went off several times. It wasn't just in 1 Corinthians 6. And it's specifically 1 Corinthians 6, um, I do love, because he, he tells you not to go in front of the judges. And he, he says, oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed. For shame, he says. But in Matthew as well, I mean, he, he said, you know, he went off on the um, uh, seduces. And he said, you know, stop seducing me. Stop seducing me. Don't play these mind games. And I had that happen this week, and it was so funny because this guy came on, and he was selling me the 13th Amendment. And I'm like, you're just here pitching this crap. You know, don't pitch me. Don't sell me stuff from the law merchant. I do not want to hear what you have to sell as far as concepts go. And he's like, oh, how dare you call me that? No, 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 honey. You are known by your works and actions. You already did that. You came... To my places and advertise your concepts to me that allows me to evidence you by your own works you are marked by your own works and Jesus spoke of that so many times and, and one of the you know my favorite was when the disciples came and and um, it was just exactly like that guy because I, I told him don't sell me anything and it's like you know you're just mad at me because I don't like you to you all the time and blah 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 I love you I love you and that, that is the action of a seducer. He was using seduction to sell me things. I love you, yeah. Tammy. And it's always the same. I mean, I, I send you, because it's so funny to me, um, you know, they, these agents will come on and, um, I love you, Tammy. Listen to all your stuff. Now, what about the blood thumbprint? You know, and I'm like, that is so funny, because that's, that's seduction. And then the next level is, I love you, I love all your stuff, listen to all your audios, love you, and follow. And then in the next instant, they're like, what do you think about the 13th Amendment? What do you think about OPPT? What do you think about these 
this process over here and I'm like stop advertising to me you are only evidencing yourself as an agent and it's worse for you I'm not interested in, in altering my heading and, it, and it's quite irritating to be uh, surrounded daily by these agents yeah well once you realize what constitutional theory is you can begin to pick these things apart for example the uh, mantra the Patriots been um, espousing for years well we need to get our republic back you know the word democracy is never mentioned in the United States Constitution and well no under constitutional theory you can have a democracy or a republic depending on market conditions okay so um, you know digging a little deeper why would we need to be made republic when we were already public to begin with okay now just think about that for a second re public as in re representatives these representatives has represented you as the re public because they want to get you under this attorney work product doctrine and dodge that uh, responsibility accountability of the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity legalize killing you legalize raising you legalizing everything under the sun they're doing ramming GMOs down your throat uh, ramming all their products and yeah for the people coming to us trying to sell us back to these constitutional concepts and these other products uh, stop advertising that I don't want to hear it anymore I've already done the research on it I'm over it okay I'll I'll I'll, I'll take you back right into the Constitution and, and show you you know where uh, under the Commerce Clause it says you know they shook hands with themselves and agreed amongst themselves that uh, it's okay to uh, engage in private acts and acts of commerce and uh, you know as long as they don't harm anybody but um, well, if you're patronizing us why uh, <laughs> sorry but you just yeah. can't catch us yeah. can't catch me can't catch me yeah. it's in the bag that was article 1 uh, section 9 clause 4 the, the last clause after the the clause that said no bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed which meant the end of the document so they came back in with article 4 maintaining that uh, they cannot cannot make you prostitutes no capitulation without enumeration of power so they said in that document we will not make them prostitutes unless they give us power but they already had it in Article 1. It says power is invested in the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives in Congress assembled. You already vested power in them to do whatever they wanted to you. And uh, in that, you need to divest, divest, take up your own authority, take up your own cross. It's not that hard. Get rid of those concepts. That that is why you are crucified. Jesus is crucified by casting lots, taking up concepts and all of these titles. You've got to defend. Drop all those things. That's right. Well, so thanks for being here with us. That about wraps our show up for this week, and uh, we'll be back next week with some. Huge breaking updates one way or another. Absolutely. Be so, well, everybody. Take care. Be well. We'll see you. Bye.